When creating a footprint, you probably notice there are different shapes of paths. Now, shall we use the paths which look like this, or this, or this? Which one is the correct one? Why are there three different shapes of paths? I asked Tom, and here is his answer. Ever since the IPC SM 782 back in 1987, which was a standard for 18 years, they, 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 they showed in the text oblong pad shape. They, call it, they, they didn't call it oblong. They called it full radius. Okay? Um, and so, but, but full radius means oblong. Okay? And, um, but all the pictures in the SM782 were all rectangular. And so people who didn't read the text created rectangular pad shapes. And I believe that that's where the component manufacturers, they got a hold of the standard and they looked at all the pictures and all the pictures had rectangles. And so they made all their recommended patterns with rectangles. Okay? And so even though the standard says oblong, the manufacturers, component manufacturers recommended rectangle pad shape. Now, what we recommend at TCB libraries is the uh, uh, rounded rectangular pad shape. Because if you have a rectangular pad shape and you give that data to the, to the assembly shop and they make the, the, the stencil, the stencil is the picture in the middle, okay? And the picture in the middle has um, rounded corners. Now, now, we gave them a rectangular pad data, but they're going to use a laser to cut out those apertures and they, they make the corners round to make it so that it lifts up easier. So that you know, when, you, when you lift the stencil up, Okay, you, you, you squeegee on the paste, then the stencil has to come up, and you want it to release all the paste down onto the board. Okay, and if you have rectangular, if you have sharp corners, the paste has a tendency to stick in the sharp corners. Of course, it depends on the viscosity of the paste. If it's, if it's, um, if it's a, you know, um, a thick paste or a thin paste, okay, they have different paste masks. There's a couple hundred of them out there. So, but, but, but people would have trouble with uh, the paste sticking in the corners of the stencil. And so therefore they round the corners so that they get a, a better release. Okay. And so what we're saying in PCB libraries is, is that, well, then why don't you make the pad shape the same as the stencil shape? Okay. And also if you take a picture on, on the, on the right hand side, um, where there's no solder on the corners of these parts. On the, on, the, on the left side is lead solder, and on the right side is lead-free solder. And you've you got no solder going out to the, ed, ed, the edges of the parts. Okay? And so, therefore, I, I wouldn't... How could you recommend a rectangular pad shape when it's useless real estate anyway, when there's no, there's no solder going out there? Okay? And so... Um, so I think that you know when 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 the when the CAD vendors uh, produced a rounded rectangular pad shape, they kind of made their marketing. Uh, this is good for lead-free solder. And that's not true. All pad shapes are good for lead-free. Okay, there's no such thing as a rounded rectangle that's good for lead-free. Okay, but rectangle is good too, and the oblong is good too, and the D-shaped pad shape is good for lead-free too. There's no such thing as a a lead-free pad, okay? So I wanted to get that out there so that everybody knows that. So it's um, perfectly go... fine, just use rectangular pad shapes and it's no problem. Yeah, yeah. if the, if, if the component manufacturer um, recommends it, you know, you can go ahead and use it, but you're gonna get, you're, you're still gonna get rounded rectangular yeah. stencils and you're still gonna get, you're still gonna get no solder in the corners, but it's okay to use them. Okay, okay but we need to say um, this is only for like very small dimensions when it actually is vi really visible for bigger parts it doesn't really matter well yeah i'm going to go into that i think in a, in a, i'm, I'm going to go into that here in the, in the near future here about about why you have to use rectangular pad shape in some cases okay okay so let's go ahead and flip this flip the um, slide here in these parts right here these are these are called uh, d f n called dual flat no lead parts and then the bottom picture in the bottom right is a is a is an lga a land grid array okay now if you're using these parts 
you have to use a rectangular pad shape. You can't use a rounded rectangular at all because because the pad is one to one scale of the of the of the lead. Okay. So, because believe me, this part and and this this part here and up here, it, it might look it might look big, okay, um, but um, but it's really only uh, one millimeter by a half millimeter. Mm -hmm. It is so small; it's micro small, right? You could put a thousand of them in the palm of your hand, okay, and therefore the 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 the, the, the pad size and shape have to be very, very close to one to one scale of that of that component lead. Okay. And and you know, and the same thing with the out land grid array. The land grid array is sort of like a BGA but with flat leads or whatever. And and and, and the pad size is almost one to one scale of the lead, of the of the terminal lead. Okay. And so for, for these component families here, you have to use a rectangular pad. So you have to know when to use an oblong pad, when to use a rounded rectangular pad, when to use a rectangle pad. You, you know, designers have to know and librarians and managers have to know when these pad shapes come into play. Okay? So can we say like it is safer to use than a rectangular pad shape always? Um, you are not going to do anything wrong if you always use rectangular. You're, you're not. You're, you're not doing anything wrong.